this year. In recognition of the countless contributions of our veterans, the Salvation Army and the City of Chandler's Museum and Diversity Office have worked together to present this program to honor those who fought, continue to fight, and who have given their lives for this country. Thanks for joining us for this special program. And once again, a heartfelt thank you to all of our veterans. My birth name is Lewis Ray Bradley. I'm known as Lou. My rank was sergeant. And you're in the United States Marine Corps? United States Marine Corps, the few, the proud, the greatest fighting force on Mother Earth. So how old were you when you enlisted in the military? I enlisted on my 17th birthday. 17th. What was it like being 17 going into the military? The new adventure. Yes. Especially when you got the boot camp, that was a real adventure. We had what we call drill instructors, who were not fathers or older brothers. They were disciplinarians that had no qualms about whacking you alongside the head with your rifle if they found a speck of dirt on it. Yeah. Or, especially like at night when the lights were out, if anybody got caught talking, you ended up going on a little drill in the dark into the swamps with the alligators and the cotton mouse. It was a long 13 weeks and I saw the most beautiful American flag that I've ever seen when we were on the rifle range as the sun was peeking down and was directly behind the flag. And all the white, the stars and the stripes were all silver. So, and what was it like being in the Korean War? It was no picnic, not when you're being shot at. Of course, my job uh, as a radio man, uh, they assigned me to a maintenance squadron, MAW-12, and they put me in a radio shop and I knew absolutely nothing about the inside of a radio. And we lost our helicopter air sea rescue crew chief and I volunteered to take his job and I ended up with that and going on missions to get down pilots. And whenever we had a full sortie, which was full bomb loads of the four squadrons going out, we had to be in the air just in case there was an accident. And we had to be in the air when they came back. And then we had to go get anybody that didn't make it back. Wow. So out of all your experience, you know, serving in the military, do you have a story that was most memorable that you remember during your time that you can share with us? The one that was most memorable is when I was in Korea, I was assigned for a month of mess duty, and I had two jobs. One job was in the evening of making ice cream for the next day. The other job was to take a six by and go out to the gate and pick up the Korean workers and bring them in, and then in the evening, taking them back to the gate. Now the cooks didn't like me very much because some of the ice cream I made was various flavors that I thought of, like Tutti Frutti, where I used all their fruit cocktail, <laughs> and peach, <laughs> things like that. So the cooks got a little angry at me for ruining their, their dessert for the next day. Yeah. Do you have any parting messages to share to fellow veterans out there? To fellow veterans? Well, just keep up the good work that you did in the military and serve your community. God, country, community. Well, thank you again for your service. And you're welcome. To all veterans of all branches, thank you for your sacrifice, your bravery, and the example you set for us all. We don't know them all, but we owe them all. In short, thank you for your service. Hey, uh, my name is Blaine Long. This is Mr. John Rawhouse. Marcus Whedon, my buddy David Libman, we're going to play a song for you called Flanders Fields. We hope you like it. Fields of poppies blow. We 
between the crosses, row on row. Mark our placing in the sky. Locks still bravely sing and fly. Scarce heard of me, the guns below. Flanders fields of poppies blow. We are the dead. Short days ago. We live felt dawn. So sunset glow. It lived and we loved and now we lie in Flanders Field. Flanders Field. Take up the quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw. Torch be yours now, hold it high. You break faith with us who die. Shall not sleep though poppies grow. Flanders fear. We are the dead. Short days ago. So sunset glow He loved and we loved and now we lie Ooh Flanders feel Flanders feel Come on John Short days ago, we live felt dawn. So sunset glow. He loved and we loved and now we lie in Flanders Field. Flanders Fields In Flanders Fields I want to share my deepest and heartfelt thank you to veterans today on behalf of my family, on behalf of the Chandler community, thank you for all you do, all you've done, and everything you'll do moving forward. This is a special day, and, and while every year I usually take my family to Veterans Oasis Park to celebrate and commemorate, uh, this day will, will be a little bit special, a little bit different, uh, but I did want to take the time to reach out and thank all of our veterans for everything you do. Thanks very much. The Salvation Army was originally formed in 1865 by William Booth in London, and eventually that mission of serving the poor and indigent, as well as others, including the military, traveled around the world. During World War I, a group of Salvationists from America and other countries traveled to France and Germany to provide spiritual engagement and comfort to the soldiers. While they were there at the front lines, they served cookies, pies, cakes, and donuts especially from huts to the soldiers. They also nursed the wounded and dying. At home, they rolled bandages and, and did all sorts of things for bases, including dining room service, recreation facilities, and worship services. Salvation Army officers have provided spiritual comfort for American soldiers since the Spanish-American War. Some Salvation Army officers serve as an official capacity in the military as a chaplain, and chaplains are actually regularly enlisted men in the armed forces doing the exact same training 
as all of the other soldiers. But to also be a chaplain, they have to have a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in divinity. They usually complete a full military career and sometimes serving 20 years or more. During World War II, the Salvation Army joined a group of five other nonprofits to create the USO, the United Service Organizations. During World War II, the USO, as well as their own clubs called Red Shield Clubs, provided all types of services to soldiers. Everything from worship and reading and writing, games and places to do sports, as well as training things and, and recreation things like photography clubs and art classes. They also provided snack bars and soft drinks and even food like hamburgers and especially donuts. They also sent care packages, knitted clothing, and other kinds of needs to the soldiers on the front lines. During Korea and Vietnam, the Salvation Army did very similar things to what they did during World War II, including running USO clubs and Red Shield clubs, but they also provided mobile canteens to provide spiritual counsel and entertainment and refreshment to the troops. In the 1970s, the Salvation Army stepped away from the USO when the USO decided to start to serve alcohol. And then by the time 1978, when the United States was no longer involved in any active conflicts, they closed the remainder of their Red Shield clubs. From Desert Storm to today, the Salvation Army has continued to support veterans in all sorts of ways, including sending comfort kits and phone cards, and even paying for emergency trips for soldiers back to visit home in times of emergency. They also provide assistance to veterans here in the United States, including housing assistance through the Veterans Administration, as well as all sorts of programs, including skill training, spiritual guidance, job search, and even hospital visitations. Each year after the Civil War, Memorial Day has been a special part of America. Families, friends getting together and remembering those who have made the ultimate sacrifice for our country. So this year, I hope you will do the same on Memorial Day right here in Chandler and across the country. Thank you. I cheered for 12 years of my life, so I was definitely seen as, you know, a girly girl and just fun and carefree and then to go into the Marine Corps where it's, you know, structure and rules and you have so much that you have to abide by and you have, you know, you have to be this professional person that I think that as a whole drove me to want to do it because people didn't believe in me. They're like, yeah, right, I give you three weeks and I'm like, no, let's do it. And, you know, here it is 12 years later and I'm like, in your it. face. Yeah. <laughs> you did it. Yep. My name is Ashley McWhirt and I served in the United States Marine Corps. And how long were you in the Marine Corps for? I was active duty for five years and I've been a reservist for seven. And what made you join the Marine Corps? Honestly, I was going to college and a recruiter contacted me asking me what I was doing and I had no real you know, goal in line just to go to college and I decided to meet with him and thought it'd be a fun opportunity and jumped at it and was like, yeah, let's go, why not? <laughs> the Marine Corps kind of have a, an ego that they are the best fighting force and if I am going to join the military, why not join the best one? Maybe it's a part of me and it's always been, you know, like striving for the best, but that it just appealed to me a lot more than any of the other branches. And what was it like going through boot camp and where were you stationed? I was stationed um, when I graduated boot camp in Kings Bay, Georgia. It's a Marine Corps Security Force Battalion. Um, going through boot camp, it was hard. It was, um, you know, the drill instructors, they, they tear you down, you know, they try to make you feel like you're nothing. And then once they get to that point, they build you back up into this strong Marine. <laughs> that they want you to be and you know they kind of give you all the confidence in the world at that point and it just makes you feel like you're kind of like better than everybody <laughs> but not you know with too big of an ego. Wow and how many places were you stationed at? Well when I was on active duty I was in Kings Bay, Georgia and then I also went to Fort Meade, Maryland which was with Mar4 Cyber um, and then as a reservist I was in Savannah, Georgia. I was in Washington DC and then I've also been in uh, where I'm currently at I'm out of East LA it's with 3rd Anglico. Okay. 
And what is that like being in the reservist versus in active duty? As a reservist, you do it, you know, like the commercial says, the one week in a month, two weeks out of the year. Um, it's, it's nice, you know, it gives you the opportunity to still be a civilian and have your normal life back at home with your family and maybe a little bit slower pace. And then you go and, you know, be a Marine and you go and do your reserve thing where you're still maintaining the same professionalism, you maintain the same ethics that they teach you and it's it's completely different world and it's I love it it's been a great time well, and now you work in PD I do and <laughs> is that a lot of the military experience that you have very similar to what you do right now so what I do right now as a police records specialist is more of the paperwork you know the administrative side of it which is pretty similar to what I was doing in the Marine Corps um, except for you know we're not handing out gear we're not doing that type of stuff, but you can kind of relate it to when we work with the citizens, you know, providing them police reports and we're still, it's that customer service baseline. Very cool. And I know we talked earlier about like what type of services were important coming back. Um, you know, you talked about Heroes for Hire and TAP. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? So Heroes to Hire um, is a an agency that helps you get back on your feet. They, you know, they help you with your resumes, they help you with interview skills, they take the skills that you had in the military and they form it into civilian jobs that you know can help you get a job. They look for different agencies to hire you that they think would be good. The transition assistance program, it's about a week or two long that you still do while you're active duty and they kind of do similar things. They get you ready for the civilian world, they help you with your resume, your you know, come in every day wearing business casual clothes, kind of getting in that mindset. Mm -hmm. um, they set you up if you need to file disability claims for anything. They help you, you know, they give you all the resources that you need. And what are the, why are those services so important to veterans coming off of service? You know, sometimes you just don't know what you're going to do. You kind of have been in this atmosphere for four years, eight years, ten years, you know, sometimes even longer. You know, you retire from the military and that's the only thing you've been doing for so long that you know you kind of don't remember how to go about anything and they give you these tools to set you back up for success because they don't want to see you fail. Do you have anything that you would encourage you know women at your age to join the military that you would tell them like do it go for it? I definitely believe everybody should at least serve four years it I think it makes you a better person it gives you a different perspective to life um, it I think it makes you a better person. There are challenges, of course, with anything you do, but I think it, it helps you out a lot. I do want to thank all the veterans that have served, that have been there fighting the fight. We miss everybody that is no longer here with us, and you know they're constantly in our prayers, they're constantly in our thoughts, and thank you to everybody who supports us. Please join me as we commemorate all men and women who have made the ultimate sacrifice for our nation. All give some, some give all. We know freedom is not free. We are all our foreign heroes who gave their lives to fight for the peace and protect our freedom, a sincere thank you. Though they are gone, they will live on in our hearts and minds. Chandler Veterans Duty is a traveling banner exhibit from the Chandler Museum which pays tribute to Chandler's residents who have served in the military. Ernie Karkula grew up in the Ocotillo area of Chandler, and during World War II, he enlisted in the Marine Corps. He went overseas and fought in the Pacific Theater, serving in several major engagements there from Guadalcanal to Okinawa. He was able to return to Chandler, and he served as a police officer here in Chandler after his service was done. Jim Ryan served in the Army in the 1970s. He studied foreign languages and ended up working in Army intelligence. The Chandlerite, who was born and raised here, went to Seton High School. After his service was done, spent 10 years working in national intelligence. Raul Navarrete joined the Navy in World War II and served for three years. He returned to Chandler and worked in some civil service jobs, and in the 1970s, he became Chandler's first Latino mayor and served a couple of terms as mayor. Carlos LaPaglia from Chandler enlisted in the Navy during World War II. He served on board the USS Indianapolis. 
He was on its final mission as it delivered the uranium for the nuclear weapon which was dropped on Hiroshima. After it dropped off its cargo, it stopped in port to refuel. After that, it was on its way across the Pacific when it was torpedoed by a Japanese submarine. The ship sank and hundreds of servicemen were stuck in shark-infested water for days before they could be rescued. Carlos was lucky to survive that ordeal and return to Chandler. Also on this banner, we have Corley Haggerton, one of several Chandler High School students who dropped out of high school to enlist in the Navy. He later returned after the war and got his high school degree, but during the war, he served in the Navy, primarily refueling Navy vessels, and he was serving in the Pacific, and he was the last one to cast off the USS Indianapolis before it was sunk. Corley had no idea that his friend Carlos was actually on board and when he heard about that he was on board and that he'd survived it was just this unbelievable thing because he had been the last one to cast off this ship before it was destroyed. To learn more about Chandler's veterans visit chandlerpedia.org. Over my 30-year career as a military officer I've had the unfortunate yet honor to present the American flag to the widows of the service men and women that have gave the ultimate sacrifice for their country. And we say a few words before we present the flag to the widow. And some of the key phrases in that, in that those words we say to this individual is, on behalf of a grateful nation. As we go through this Memorial Day weekend, please remember those few words. It's important to remember that they gave their life for this country. Thank you. All right, hey, uh, this song is called Bring It Back Again. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, time for silver and patient gold. Risk was high, you were feeling bold. Now I do the little thing like you were told. Mom, make it out alive, alive. Oh, convenience, planned accidents. Cross fingers, lost evidence. Reckless love makes perfect sense. I still got tread on my tire. Well, I'm trying to save my soul Baptized in the river rock and roll What are you gonna do when you get too old And you're tired? Well, you've been discovered right where you've always been You're surrounded by the trunks that you call friends Well, it might not stop, but it comes to an end That's for sure sing and play guess you're gonna have to get girls a different way goes around comes around goes around i need a cool drink of water maybe like a crust of bread feel like a bomb gave birth in my head i repeat these nine words that i just said repeat these nine words that i just said well i'm trying to save my soul Surrounded by the trunks that you call friends. Well, it might not stop, but it comes to an end, that's for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bring it back again. That's the real job, Chandler. Bring it back again. Trouble that's been creeping up behind me. 
desert in the middle of the night singing oh well every mile when I go yeah oh hey watch him go in come on hey. song welcome to the business of all night long well it's one more but taking what you get whole lot of oh well well oh well well i'm trying to save my soul baptized in the river rock and roll what are you gonna do when you get too old in your tired Thank you so much to all our veterans out there. Thank you for your service. I want to thank all of our veterans out there in Chandler. To all of our airmen, sailors, soldiers, and Marines. To you and your families, thank you for sacrificing to help protect our country. And this Memorial Day, we will also remember those that have made the ultimate sacrifice. Thank you. Um, my name is Bill Berry, and I was in the United States Army. I was airborne and a combat engineer. What motivated you to join the military? Well, my normal answer is that I wanted to join to go give my country, but that's not really the truth. The truth of the matter is I had a choice. The choice was go in the service or go to jail. I chose go to the service. Shortly thereafter, I definitely know that I was in the right place. And how long were you in the military for? I was actually only in for two years and nine months. I uh, started off in Fort Lewis, Washington, uh, basic training, then AIT in uh, Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. Then I went to jump school and I was stationed in Fort Bragg under the 82nd Airborne Banner for until this June of 1967, in which time we went to Detroit for the Detroit riots and it inspired me to volunteer to go to Vietnam. Mm -hmm. By September, I was in Vietnam serving with the 173rd Airborne. And what did you do when you were over in Vietnam? I'm a combat engineer, so I cleared zones. I went with the infantry out on search and rescue, search and patrol. Um, we did search and destroys. We did city controlment. We did a lot of things in Vietnam and during my eight and a half months. Wow, eight and a half months. Yep, and that was before I got hit. March 29th, 1968. You got hit? Yes. I uh, was out on a berm on a hill taking a picture and uh, an RPG came down on the ground. Wow. Put me in the hospital. That was, and that was my longest tour of duty. It was 17 months in and out of Letterman General Hospital in Fort Ord. How, what was it like coming back after, you know? Were well, I came back on a stretcher, so of course it wasn't a matter of coming through the airports and having many of the issues that many of our guys were having and and we were very gung-ho. Our particular unit is probably one of the most and at the most troubled times in Vietnam. Uh, November 67 we were in War Zone 2, um, Air Zone 2 and that was quite a traumatic bunch of issues that went on. Uh, but coming back so I was on a stretcher, came back to the military hospital so everything was all you know happy and fun and games so to speak from there. So I got out, and when I got out, uh, 
I took an early out to go back to school and made the mistake of signing up to go to San Jose College where by most people think the Berkeley was the bad, the worst army or worst uh, place to go for war protesters but realistically San Jose was and so it kind of put me in a back seat and for the next 40 years most people did not know I was even in the military from 1969 till till 2009 I did not go to a parade I did not get involved in anything. I went in and out of the VA hospital because that was my medical treatment period. I didn't have an outside doctor other than a dentist. <laughs> so, and I would go in and out of there and I wouldn't even encounter and talk to my veterans. Even in, even all that time as we worked as a, as, as a Christian discipleship ministry, housing people, I didn't, I mean, yeah, we had veterans and I kind of worked with them, but I did not. But in 2009, I went back to the DAV and one of the things that they said was, you know, try and reach and encounter your background. So I did. I went to look up the 173rd Airborne, which was I was part of in Vietnam. And of course, that was the best fighting unit in, Vietnam, in, in all of military history. Of course, I'm a little biased. But the, the things that occurred um, that I encountered and the people just told me I needed to uh, look back into that. I finally opened my eyes up. It was like part of what you asked for today was pictures. I have none. All of these have been destroyed or otherwise destroyed or just lost. So coming back to that, I took a trip down to uh, the Vietnam wall, the portable wall, when it came to the VA hospital. And there, I re-encountered my past realized I needed to be there and needed to um, acknowledge it and it needed to go forward and with the help of the DAV uh, the Veterans Administration VA clan the, the VA centers in Mesa on Longhorn and the one in Phoenix on 21st Street um, I've done that and so I've dedicated the rest of my time in service to that purpose. And what was it like coming back to Chandler? And, well, know. Chandler, um, Chandler is where my wife and I moved in 1991. I, this has just been the city that I have loved and I've been honored to work for and be part of. Uh, we've worked with uh, Chandler Community Services and everything since that time through the ministry that I'm part of, which is Resurrection Street Ministry. And can you tell us what they do to help veterans? Um, we have a number of positions that we do with veterans. We do job training, we do job, and job expert points and that with our thrift store and our food bank operation in Mesa. But we do so many outreaches in Chandler, not just with the food bank, but our primary point is we're veterans transportation and veteran services. So we look to veterans to come to us at any point in time. We would love to be have them part of us. We don't require membership. We don't require you know, them do anything. We just want to be able to serve them. I'm gonna say this to the general public. It still feels odd for someone to come up to me and say, thank you for your service. And I still wait for things to happen that happened back in 69. So if they look like they're cowards, just thank them. Step back and thank them. And say, you know, there's some places you can go. Disabled American veterans, the VA centers. There's places they can go. Across the United States, Americans are paying tribute to those who have fought for our country and for the purposes of peace and some who have died. And in Chandler, we like to remember and honor all of those, those who have given their lives, active military, first responders, and all who have served the purposes of peace. We give you a heartfelt thank you, and we're grateful to your work and your ongoing commitment to peace, as well as those who have stood alongside of you. Thank you.